Hello, my name is Jim McGilvery and welcome to The Pipe Box, your source for all things piping. If you find this video useful, please give it a like and please subscribe to this YouTube channel to see more videos like this. You can download the music for this video by going back to the YouTube channel description of this video and you will find a link there to a PDF. Today I would like to talk to you about one of our most maddening pieces of technique and that is the lowly burl. It's the double tap that we give on low A. It appears at the ends of parts, it appears at the start of parts, it appears in the middle of parts. If you're going to be a piper you have to be able to play a burl of some sort. Over my shoulder, you will see in the first bar, I've written the burl out in slow motion so you can see that the low A divides into three with two taps on low G. The second bar shows the burl written out as you would see it in a piece of pipe music. The two arrows indicate where the beat falls in the burl. The beat falls in a burl on the very first grace note, always. The burl is also a rare piece of technique that can be played several ways. I count five ways in which the burl can be played. What I'd like to do now is give you a quick tour of those five ways. I'll show you how they're played and then at the end I will tell you which I think is the best and then we will look at some exercises. So, here are the five ways you can play a burl. First is the double tap, which is two taps of the finger, straight and simple. Second is the tap drag, where you tap the low A hole and then you drag the finger over it, curling it inward. Tap, drag. <laughs> then there's a double sweep where you sweep down over the hole and then straight back over the hole again. Like this. Then there is a reverse double sweep. Same movement, just in the opposite order. Then there is the number seven burl. Those are the five kinds of burls. I will tell you that my favorite and the overwhelming favorite of all the top pipers I know is the number seven burl, the final one that I did. So called because your little finger traces a number seven as it hits the low A hole twice. The finger sweeps down across the hole does not leave the chanter. Then you pull it back almost on its side and it drags across the hole again. The key is that you hit the hole twice and form that number seven. A couple of other key points about the seven burl. When you sweep your finger down, don't lift it off the chanter as I said. If you decide to play a double sweep burl, same thing, when you sweep down, don't lift your finger up the chant, off the chanter, just bring it back up again. So with the number seven, you bring the finger down, don't lift it, and then use curl sideways to just hit the side of the pinky finger, and that's your number seven burl. <laughs> If you're just learning a burl, 
I would encourage you to try the number seven and try it for a sustained period of time. What I often see new pipers doing is they use whichever method that allows them to play a burl right away. And that isn't necessarily the best method for them. I start all my beginners on a seven burl. If time goes by and the seven burl isn't working out for them, then at that point we might switch. I played a tap drag for two or three years and I've played the seven burl all of my life. So I'm pretty convinced the seven is a great burl and I think most pipers agree. What I'd like to show you now is a really, really simple burl exercise. And again, you can print out the music by going to the description in the YouTube channel of this video. So here is a very simple burl exercise. I will be using the seven burl throughout this video. You can use whatever burl works best for you. That exercise lacks somewhat in entertainment value, I'm afraid. It's not one of my most creative works, but it has great value. It makes you play lots of burls, and there's no better way to learn how to play a burl than to just play lots and lots of burls. That's the burl in a fairly simple context, sitting on low A playing burl after burl after burl. You must also be able to play burls from other notes, particularly top hand notes, E, F, high G, and high A. That requires a distinct low A at the front of the burl. He hobado, he hobado. We'll hear that in the next exercise. I hope you could hear two things as I played that exercise. I hope you could hear the low A at the start of the burl very clearly. And I hope you could hear that that low A, if you were tapping your foot, was on the beat. He hobado, he hobado, he hobado, he hobado. The actual burl comes after your foot hits the floor. The other thing I hope you heard in that exercise was that I'm not playing the burl as fast as I possibly can. I find the burl a rhythmical and lovely movement when it's left a little bit open. Try to fit the rhythm of the tune. Don't try to play it necessarily the quickest you possibly can. Now I want to move on to another really common iteration of the burl, and that is the burl with the G grace note in front of it. Let's hear the exercise. Again, you'll recognize that as a new version of the most boring exercise in the world, but man, it's good for your burls. G grace note in front of the burl, make sure there is an audible low A after that G grace note, and make sure that the G grace note is on the beat, meaning when the high G finger hits the chanter, the foot hits the floor. Hubba-dum, hubba-dum. Hubba-dum. 
we now need to be able to do this G grace note burl from any of the top hand notes. Let's listen to that exercise. That's the G grace note burl from all the top hand notes. You may have noticed that when we went from high G down to the burl, we played a high A grace note because we can't play a high G grace note from high G. The high A grace note is on the beat, just like the high G grace note is. One other burl issue I wanted to point out is a problem some of you may encounter, particularly people who have just learned how to play a burl. And that is when you play your burl, your B finger moves and air gets out and you make a funny little B sound. I want you to know that that's a very common problem and that with persistence, it will go away. I've seen many, many pipers start their burl with that problem and solve it within a few weeks or a few months. If it persists past that point, you might want to consider a different kind of burl, but persist with the burl of choice, which again, for me, is the seven burl, and try to keep that B finger still. There's more to be said about burls, burls from B and burls from C, bottom hand notes, but I'm going to leave that right now to my rhythmic finger work exercise book where there are more burl exercises and particularly complex movements from the bottom hand. That's the story on burls today. For me, Jim McGilvery of the Pipe Box, good piping.